Hi, my name is Stuart Taylor. I used to shoot a television show called Going Nowhere Slowly, uh, which is what a lot of creatives are feeling right now, like they are going nowhere slowly, except some have truly embraced this pandemic and they are flying right now. One of those people, comedian, vlogger, all around nice guy, Alfred Adrian. Hello, Hi, sir. Yeah. So good to be here. Are you well? Yeah, I'm very well. I'm excited. You seem to jump on this vlogging thing uh, just in time. Like it's as, that, it's as though you knew there was a pandemic on the way. And I, so you had like a time to prepare and now you could perfect it while you were in lockdown. The weird thing is it felt, now it feels like the, you know, when the boat, in those movies where the boat moves and the fuck, and the James Bond is running and he jumps. I feel like I was that last brand I just grabbed. Feels like that now. But I had no idea, obviously. And you were the first, you were in the very first vlog. I remember being like ridiculously self-conscious with that camera. So, because... You you feel like I'm an adult man. What am I doing with a with a with a rig, <laughs> running around taking like selfies? Like like what feels like the behavior and this is a very patriarchal thing of a young teenage girl. You know what I mean? So I was like, it took a lot, man, and I, it was a long time in the making. It just like there was a moment where things weren't making sense for me anymore. I was I was depending too much on channels, agents someone to pull me up and I was like the only way I'm going to make a name for myself is by starting the day with one person and building my own following so that I control that channel because bro you know this like you wait for a tv show and then they tell you how to be in the show and if you if you're lucky enough to get the show and when the show airs there's a lot of drama and you don't get like you get put and it just doesn't work you you do comedy for 10 years, no one knows who you are. Everyone watches and go, wow, that was good. I was like, because I'm not new. <laughs> That's what happened. I like that. So it was very much about taking control of your own destiny and, and not being, not, not having to stand in, in line. You know, uh, Kurt, Kurt Skundert and I used to have a saying about sitting on the back of someone else's bucky. Yeah. Like, you know, where you're dependent on someone else for a lift. You're always on yeah. the back of their bucky. And there was yeah. this idea that I'd rather drive my old crook than sit Absolutely. at the back of your liquor bucky. Absolutely. That's what, what it was. I started to feel like it's just not happening for me. And the most, and I, when I looked at everything, what then seemed like a ridiculous thing was everyone was going podcast mal. So I was like, no one, first of all, even if my podcast, which in the sea of podcasts does really well, they still don't know how else. No one, I listen to Eddie Zondi every Sunday. I, he passed away. I had to Google him to see his face. You know, and, and in this business, we need the face to the sound. And that's very much the beginning. And then it evolved. Lockdown made it go a whole different direction in a way. Well, let's, let's talk about that. So you were doing it. Pre-lockdown, how regular were you? How regularly were you putting out content? I made a, I made a, I said to myself, listen, I'm going to put out um, two videos a week. Right. And I started with two videos a week and it was necessary because I was learning how to edit the thing. I was like trying to figure out what works because it, 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 it's all on the fly. And I was, you know, learning as I was going and the more I sort of, edited and I was sitting there circling, figuring out how to do this, make the sound better in post and those things. That too, um, a week helped me a lot to, to try and like bridge that, cut that learning curve. So then I was trying to push three a week. So, and then it started going, no, I'm going back to one a week. And then for a while there, I wanted to make one amazing one a week. And the rule was always that the next one is better than the previous one in some way. So the editing is better on this one. The story is better on that one. Every week I'd go, what did I do better this week? <laughs> you know, and then sometimes I think it would be terrible, but I'd be proud of it for very different reasons. <laughs> My wife would watch it and go, it's boring. You know, <laughs> that's how it starts. So some, some creators will go quantity over quality. Yeah. Um, but I like what you've said about as long as it incremental improvements, Maybe, yeah. maybe the lighting is better in this one, as long as one yeah. thing improves. Yeah. 
I don't want to fall into those stereotypes, man. I don't want to shovel stuff at people because okay. it's, it becomes white noise if there is no sense of, there's no self, you know, it's very much like stand up. If there's no self awareness, the act is going nowhere. It is right, just years right. of the same thing. And so it was, and also just being self conscious, you know? That's an interesting thing though, because you talk about self awareness, self, being self conscious. On stage, you get an immediate feedback. Mm. You can tell if something is good because the audience applauds you. In yeah. this medium, who, I mean, I, it, it's a very difficult thing. And, and technically, when you look at my vlogs, I do three different things. And they three very distinct different things if, for, for, for people that want to pay a little bit more attention. The vlog is, is not intentionally funny. It is just me running through my day. And it's, very, it's like a very, like a, and for lack of a better word, voyeuristic thing. So like, I watch Casey Nasted for hours. Not because he's funny, but because I'm like, fuck this, I was traveling to this place. That's how it is enough. He's got a skateboard. I enjoy that. So I, I try to appeal to those people first because also my marketing mind said, I'm funny. Let them discover more of me so that brands and people, I am unashamed about this. I always look at the monetary return of my art. I've sold my soul chop sticky by sticky. I go, if you look at Alfred Adrian, um, all you see now is a comic, but if I could shape the view of the consumer, because I know how people consume uh, from a corporate perspective, because I used to be the guy, we Google it all first. And all you see is the dirty comedy because some brought took a video, you know? And so I wanted to start flooding the internet with positive imagery of myself, which I could control and perhaps make funny and make interesting. So that was part of the vlog part. And then that started rolling off. And then if I'm funny in it, that's great, you know, but I'm just trying to make a package, small thing that you can watch like an episode every week. And then I started going, well, I need some brand association. I need, I need to do file diet with Stuart because Stuart's got a huge Catonian audience. And if they see that I'm friendly with Stuart, it gives me a level of credibility that I didn't have before. So people are watching now and they go, oh my goodness. And those things are only paying off now because the third tier of the thing is what made us really popular. I started noticing in the vlogs already, people were very much more interested in my wife than me and the family and the other aspects of me. And I was absolutely fine with that because I was like, because she is a, a character, but she's, she's not seeking the spotlight. It makes it even more interesting to the audience. So then I started doing what I do in the house because during lockdown, I was like, yeah, young, what are we doing now? I've got a world of time. I don't, I'm not out at night trying terrible bits of material in smoky rooms. What do we do? I need to up my game. I need to grow this thing exponentially. And the only way I'm going to do that is to bring those funny things in. And if I blast them with a video or two a day, how do I do that? Then I started just going, if I have a funny thought. So in the old days, I used to write the thing down and then I go try the material. Now I just go, wow, you sick. And I run it and my wife is an audience member. So it doesn't make me feel so empty. And then she has a response, whether she hates it or likes it. If I find it, it, the video then becomes something else. And then watch the video. And those things ramped. Those things went from, that took me from 3,000 views to 1.1 million a month. And it Amazing. was just bad. That's, that's exactly what I want to ask you about. I mean, it, it, it's as though this lockdown managed to add some jet fuel to what you were already doing. So I think you, you've, you've, you've answered a couple of questions. I know, I know your wife and your kid, are, are these great additions to the, to the vlog. But it's interesting what you're saying about when I get the thought, don't write it down. Just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Those, the, the off-the-cuff ones, though, and it's like this is the, the, the contentious uh, debate that happens. I know a, a very good friend of ours was talking. He, he posted a picture of how many times he shoots his video until it is perfect, until it looks perfectly perfect. Um, manicured manicured but also so that it, 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 it comes across as, as 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 just off the cuff perfectly off the cuff yeah. whereas you do tend to as you say do it off the cuff does that bring a better energy 
it it makes me less less self conscious. Uh, it makes me more human, and it also makes me. It makes them. There's no faking that. So people get to know me on a more. They feel like it's a more personal level, and I'm also not shy of. There could be a stain here. Fuck it, I'm in my house. You know, it is what it is. And weirdly enough, I think because people have been have been fed the Kardashian, uh, and not knocking them, they're very popular, but like the Kardashian manicured way of looking at things, which is popular. But I think that a lot of people have followed that for so long that there is now a sort of hunger for something that isn't so clean and so manicured. And I do the manicured stuff. That's no, I was about stuff. to say, listen, I, I know for a fact that your wife will make you pick up all the dirty washing before you shoot a video. Yeah. But it, it's got a grittiness, but it's still, I, I think maybe what it is is more that it's, you've got a real vulnerability. Yes, about, that is the word. About yes. what you're doing. You, yes. You've decided, whether you've decided or not, but the, the direction, yeah. a lot of what your content has taken you discuss things which are not meant to be discussed by the by, by the stars. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You 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 yeah. you show a real vulnerable side of yourself. You I mean uh, there was there's sacrifice has been a, has been a big theme in terms of what you've spoken about about how much you've sacrificed or how much your wife has sacrificed. Mm. Was that a, is is that a conscious decision that you that you 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 display vulnerability it, it gets you more likes? Not at all. It isn't a conscious decision, but at a, from, a, from, a, from being on stage as a stand-up, over time I realized you work really hard as a stand-up to become yourself on stage. We start here right. and we, 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 we do what we think we're supposed to do and what an audience will like. And as we grow, especially the great ones, they become something completely different because you're trying to get to yourself the whole time. And so the more I've also, man, you know this thing that, that you hammer you, you get criticized and you start just going, man, if I'm going to get nailed, I'm going to get nailed for being me. And so I've just gotten closer and closer to that. And because of the nature of the short videos, there's been, a, sometimes I don't think about it. I'd like to take credit for all of this. But a lot of this stuff happened as a consequence of just doing it on the fly. Yes. Well, one of, one of the things, I mean, in the same vein of the vulnerability and, 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 was was the fact that you guys decided to read uh, criticisms? Yes. Read those comments. Yes. Critical comments. Yeah. In, in one of your in one of your vlogs, that was a very brave, uh, <laughs> but uh, but but also very interesting because I mean it, it's literally it, it was as though you were going to use the ammunition against them. Like if you spoke shit about me, I'm just going to use it to create more content. That you was know, I mean, it was genius. Yeah. In a weird way, I, I was in the shower and I was like, people always say, don't read the comments. I'm like, how do you not read the comments? I'm human. I want to read the comments. And then there is a, there's 10 amazing comments and then one person say, Yara, you look cuck. And then it hurts your soul. Then I was like, no, man. It does, man. And then I went, I need to take the sting out of this. And I also, in a weird way, need to mitigate the nastiness. It was more of a thing also in my head. In the back, I went, I, my wife didn't really choose this. My son didn't really choose this. So for the, to control this audience, to see what can happen and that you're not, just a, you're not just a keyboard hero over there, I can get to you as well. So just control yourself a little. Then I was like, let's nail them with what they said. And I just read those comments and it did make a huge difference between the nastiness I started to see come out especially towards my family. Then I was like, that stopped very quickly. And now what I see is my, uh, I see a lot more, there'll be criticism, but it doesn't have that ugly back thing. You know what I mean? And it helped yes. in that way. Very, it was, it was very, very smart. I want to talk to you a little bit about the tech because I mean, ultimately the, the goal of this conversation is to, to hopefully have creatives watch it who might be in a bit of a funk mm -mm. who goes, let me learn a bit from what people are doing. Um, from a tech perspective, what is, what is your, how did you upskill yourself in terms of uh, deciding what, what camera to use and how to use the camera and, and how to edit, et cetera? What was that process like for you? Funny thing is, is that it's so strange that you ask me this because I always go, this is the kind of question I see people would ask a guy like Donovan, 
you know, like, because he's so yeah, yeah, yeah. tuned in on. Yeah, I've seen Donovan take a phone out and put a lens on it. I was like, wait a more crazy back. Anyway, where do you buy that? I don't know. So, and then like, I, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's strange to get the question, but it's simple. It was, I am literally a bull in a Chinese shop, but I'm the guy that will do the absolute best not to break everything. So my thing was, I just did the research into what I needed at a, at a very basic level. So in my mind, I started going, I had a camera that I bought ages ago, took a couple of snaps off, but it was muck and can move on. And it was a fancy camera in my mind. But then I started shooting with it and I realized quickly that there was no autofocus, for example. And then I started doing, so now because I'm doing the stuff live and I'm turning the camera and there's Stuart, he's fuzzy, he said the line, but no one can see in the moment, the moment is gone. So I was like, I clearly need a better camera than this. I must sell this one, try and make up some money somewhere else. And it was, a, it was not a quick process. It was like, okay, I got some money in from a uh, social media thing I did. So I was like, I'm going to spend only the money from the social media to upgrade this part of my life. So I upgraded the, the camera to a, and I'm going to tell you what it was. I went for, to that Can, Canon M50 I used, and that had a nice little autofocus. Now, I realize now more and more that I didn't need that camera. I could have used this phone because a lot of what I do is, is, is just the phone. And a lot of what I do was a phone that was my wife. I just upgraded to this phone. My wife, I used to use the old phone that my wife is now using because her phone's bugged. Oh, like a four year old phone. And no one notices because it's just like with these online shows I find right now. I think that people are bird too obsessed with overly technical aspects of it and forget that the people want the jokes. You know what I mean? And yeah, so the I, con- the content still has to be key. Has I mean, to be. It's, it's, it's no good. It's no good. You, you, you're making sure that you powdered and the lighting is right, but the content is shit. It has to be good. So long story short, long story short, I have a Canon M50. That's the biggest splurge I made. And then slowly right. but surely I bought like a little Joby and I still use my phone. And then now recently I only bought a ring light. And um, so it has been small upgrades. I don't have, like I, I bought a second hand GoPro that was useless to me. And um, so I, I try and focus on the story and the content a lot more. And the, the editing stuff, I just try and make sure that it's not distracting. The, the right, camera right. can't be so bad that, you know, when you speak to someone and they are giving you the answers to life, but there's just the sticky, then the message is lost. You know what I mean? Yes. That's yes. the So I just try and make it competent enough. I'm always trying to make it better, but by the very minimum, it needs to be competent enough so that the video isn't a distraction from the, from the story because the story is the king. I, I always like to pick your brain around, around uh, some of the marketing things. My audience is so engaged right now that I, in the past, I used to have to put money to make a vlog work. I, 50 rand in a vlog. Now... It's too much money to make the vlog go bigger than what it is. So I, I, in the morning, which is a beautiful problem to have because Facebook and Instagram and, 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 and YouTube is almost powerless because my people come and look for me every morning because I've trained them. That I'm dropping a video tomorrow. And so I cannot get the level of exposure on a radio or on a TV channel that is this engaged. And so that will buy, buy, and, and, by completely by the work and the thought that I put in a year ago, which is now coming. I was just about to say, it's you've literally just come full circle on our conversation because that was the starting point. How do I, how do I become independent of radio, a producer, someone else telling me when they're going to give me exposure? So I, the other day, I got a phone call from a very big radio station that wanted to do something, but it wasn't at a great time for me. And I could have bent, normally I would have bent over backwards and I went, of course. Yes. I don't really need you that much anymore. You, you know, during, during these times, it's hard for, for some creatives to find that thing that is going to drive them. Like, I mean, we're in panic mode, so it's hard to find, find what is going to drive you. Out in, in a pandemic, outside of a pandemic, you've always had this hunger. Like, seriously, a hunger. Where does that come from? I... Don't, I wish I, 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 actually, I do know. It is from years 
of being good at something that I hated to do. It's from going to an office every day, understanding that I absolutely wasn't supposed to be here and feeling the burden of, of responsibility to please my parents, please society to try and make this work because I'm living this dream that my parents work so hard for and then loving and going to work with that knot in your stomach going like, I hate this job. Hate. And I use it in, in its purest form. I hated it. And so now I get to do something that doesn't feel like work at all. This, I, we can go on forever. Bro, the first time I made money out of comedy, I think it was 300 rand. I could not believe. It was the sweetest 300 rand I ever made. And this was a brow with a house already, you know. I've got to say, uh, Alfred, I've always loved your enthusiasm and power to you and your work ethic. You're one of those people who, pandemic or not, you are not going nowhere. You are going well, somewhere. I and hope so. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great to watch, man. It's great to watch. So power to you. I hope the, the, the vlog uh, grows from strength to strength. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for the insights. I've First and foremost, and these people don't know this, that uh, I call Stuart all the time and it's all for advice. He's the guy I call <laughs> for advice. And so it's a pleasure to be on this platform and it's a pleasure to work with you. Always, my friend. Thank you.